Hi guys, it's Catherine. So today I'm going to be talking still about books, but in a slightly more abstract sense than I would normally. But it's a topic that's been playing on my mind for a while now, and I've not really come to any revelations about it, but I just want to have a discussion about it and hopefully find out what you think as well. So I've always obviously enjoyed reading, but it's only been in the last year or so where I've been making videos and I've been engaging a lot more with other content creators and with publishers, uh, more of the industry side of things, that I've begun to see how books are also a commodity rather than or as well as being a cultural artefact. I have always owned books and I appreciate really beautiful books, but I've never had much of a compulsion to collect books and I have noticed obviously on, on YouTube there is um, this kind of tendency to put focus on owning and purchasing a lot of books. So I'm doing a master's degree studying publishing, which works really well with but also contrasts starkly with my undergraduate degree which was in English literature. And of course studying literature is all about the content and the cultural value that we place on books, whereas publishing is a business and it um, focuses not only on the cultural value of books but a lot on the financial success and the money that can be made from them. I do really want to work it in the publishing industry because I think it is only through this capitalist business model that books are disseminated and can become culture but it is still something that just makes me feel a bit uneasy. I have a quotation here that made me think a bit about this and it reads Literature now is in the hands of the mob, and the mob is stampeded. Books are increasingly written to order. Now this was said by the founder of Faber and Faber, but it was said in 1934. These are issues that are clearly not only relevant in the 21st century, and there have been discussions about who literature is for and the purpose of literature for much longer. Faber said in a footnote to this quotation that by masses, he's still only talking about several thousand people, because the proletariat are wholly outside of the book world. In that respect, I would like to hope that the publishing landscape has changed dramatically since the 1930s and uh, reading is a much more democratic activity that is available to a much wider section of the population. However, it is this issue of mass production that's the important one here because it changes how people perceive culture. And this is, of course, the main idea that runs throughout Walter Benjamin's really important essay, The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. And I don't want to talk too much about that because it gets very academic and I don't want this video to be like that. But I think at its core it's about the aura of the artwork and how this can be damaged by mass production. The quotation from Faber was written the year before Penguin Books was established, which had it as its mission statement to make books much more widely available to people who would not usually be able to afford them. I wouldn't say at all that making books um, available to a much wider selection of people damages the aura of the book in any way, but I think there is something lost when a book becomes only a commodity to be traded and sold and the content no longer matters. So has this happened? I want to talk about bestseller lists because I think, well clearly the financial success of a book is often conflated with its cultural worth but the financial success itself is often manufactured by the publisher. A publisher can create cultural value within their book by making a really effective marketing campaign, which of course costs money, or even more directly by paying a retailer like WH Smith for a position that is more prominent on their shelving. Is there a focus by some publishers on publishing books that are more economically viable rather than ones that might have more cultural significance? I think in some cases definitely the case. For example, I'm thinking of the author James Patterson, who, and I don't want to offend him or anyone who reads his books, that's not the issue, but he no longer writes the books that his name is on the front of. He comes up with the ideas and other people flesh them out into books. And this is of course why he can publish several books every single year, and it's therefore clearly a highly business-oriented model, not a natural one at all, one that's focused on making as much money as possible. In a similar vein, you can often see the same thing with literary prizes, which are of course meant to be a celebration of the literary merit of certain books, but um, there is financial motive involved as well. It costs money to submit your book to these prizes most of the time, and if your book is shortlisted, the publisher often has to pay money for that as well. 
So it is an exclusive kind of thing and it's based more on the ability of the publisher to financially support this venture, more so than, the, than genuinely recognising books that have real cultural value. This is quite a cynical view on things and overall I do think that um, literary prizes have a valuable place in book culture and they can do great things for books that genuinely are amazing and have huge literary value but I think it's just worth bearing in mind that literary prizes are not just philanthropic ventures. I think that book ownership and materialism comes into this a lot as well and it's something that I'm sure all of us practice as consumers of books. Say for example your favourite book is Pride and Prejudice. It speaks to your soul, you love the content, it's the most fabulous book in the world and you own five copies of it in all different editions. The book is a really popular one, obviously, and it has loads of gorgeous editions, but why do you feel like you have to own more than one if its value to you is its status as culture rather than a commodity? You would never like to think of Pride and Prejudice as a commodity. Why do you, you feel like you ought to own lots of copies? If it's the words themselves that are important, why would you ever need duplicates of that? I'm not trying to say that in a holier-than-thou kind of way because I am equally guilty of this as well. I um, just bought an entire new set of the Philip Pullman His Art Materials trilogy last year so that I could reread them in pretty new covers where I would get exactly the same reading experience from them if I just read them from the copies that I still own that I first read about 10 years ago. I do own multiple editions of Harry Potter and I own a few really lovely editions of Austen's books even though I own them all on Kindle. So I, I'm not trying to be evangelical about us not, we shouldn't own books or collect books, but I just think it's interesting that we, we do have, see them with the status of commodity as well as culture. So it's all very well me being evangelical about the cultural status of books, but we can't really get away from their other status as a commodity and most of us do have that compulsion to collect them as commodities. And I always think, why do we do this? When I buy a book that I could borrow or that I could loan from someone else, I always think, why am I purchasing this? Um, if not for the reason to support the author and the publisher themselves. I suppose one reason you might want to own a lot of books is kind of as a status symbol. Books are a kind of symbol of intelligence and owning lots of, lots of them makes you even more intelligent. But I don't feel like that's the case for me and I'm sure it's not for most of you. I don't own books to give me bragging rights to other people. And something that I was thinking is that book as a physical object, as a commodity, can also be an object of culture as well. For example, when I look at Winter by Ali Smith, I think of my experiences and my memories of reading it just a few weeks ago in a really pretty place on an island off the coast of Scotland and when I look at Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone I have lovely and really warm memories of reading them for the first of reading it for the first time a very very long time ago in my childhood so I suppose the physical embodiment of the book is important as well in that it kind of holds these memories and associations I also think that books can be really aesthetically pleasing, beautiful objects and I certainly don't have any objection to wanting to own beautiful things. If I choose a book from a bookshop, I'm much more likely to choose one that I think is aesthetically pleasing because if I'm going to own it in my home for a very long time, it's not unreasonable for me to want it to be pretty. The problem I have then really is not really with owning books or wanting to collect books that are pretty. In fact, it's not really much to do with our consumer behaviour. I suppose it's more to do with the behaviour of the industry within publishing and the tendency to publish books more for financial gain than to um, disseminate really important culture. I feel like it sometimes prioritises quantity over quality and forgets what should be at the heart of the book industry, the content of the books themselves, and um, prioritising those that are not just going to make a ton of money but that, are, that can have the potential to create a real difference in the world. Is that just a really hippie and old-fashioned way of looking at things? I don't know, it's kind of how I feel. This is a really big and complex topic and I feel like I've only scraped the surface but I don't want to ramble on too much. 
am I romanticising books too much? I know that my um, background definitely influences my perspective on this um, because having studied the arts, I always put the, the culture that books can have at the forefront and I know that that's maybe just not how the way that the world works. But I would love to hear your perspective on this, if you have a different one or if you agree with me, um, and just continue the conversation. So I'd love if you left a comment and we can, we can talk about it. But I hope you find this video interesting. I know it's a bit different. Uh, I'll be getting back to regular programming soon. But I hope you enjoyed it regardless, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.